out folks, my name is Nick and today we're taking a look at Tonto Quarry Expanding the House. This is the first major expansion for Tonto Quarry and it is a standalone expansion that can be played by itself or you can mix and match the cards with the base set of Tonto Quarry and with future expansions. Now if you saw my review of Tonto Quarry you know that it's a game that I like quite a bit even though I admitted that it is a very divisive game. There are some people that are just not going to be able to get past the theme and some people that are just going to love it because of the theme even though the theme is kind of paste it on and the game is pretty much dominion with some twists and turns but i still like the game a lot and i think that expanding the house is definitely not going to change your opinion if you had a definite opinion about tonto quarry to begin with but for those that did like it uh the original set of tonto quarry this is going to add some very interesting things so why don't i show you what those new cards are then we're going to come back and i'll give you my final opinion Okay, I'm just going to do a basic rundown of all the new stuff that comes in expanding the house. So, well, first thing I want to mention is that I have all of my cards sleeved in case you see that glossy kind of exterior, uh, which you may or may not want to do depending on how often you actually play the game and how many of the same cards you use over and over again. But first off, it's going to come with more love cards in the set. Like I said, this is a standalone expansion, so it has everything you need to play on its own. The only difference between these love cards, uh, which are your currency in the game, giggle giggle uh giggity giggity <laughs> uh the only difference is the artwork which you know is sure to infuriate more and more people who hate this game because of its theme but there's nothing really major there now there are two different new kinds of maid chiefs you have uh eline du roy who is going to uh have an employee cost of two and she's just worth one victory point and she has a chambermaid cost of two two servings will get her chambermaid for you and then very simply claudine Claudine de la Rochelle is eight to buy, but she's worth five victory points. And that's pretty much all that she does. Now, some of the new general maids. We have Ririko Hiragi, who is two employee cost. She's going to give you one love. You can chambermaid her for one. And as long as Ririko is is uh, your chambermaid, you may treat lily gardens as if they cost five. Now, what are lily gardens? We're going to get to that in a little bit. You have Pauline Dumont, who is cost of two, and she's going to give you one serving. And you can discard two identical cards from your hand. If you do, you draw three cards, which can be pretty good. Uh, Grace Salisbury for three uh, employ. She gives you plus one love, and you may place any maid costing three or less from the town to any player's discard pile. Suzunu Kamakawa is three to employ. She's going to let you draw one card, give you a serving. You can chambermaid her for one serving. And uh, every three Suzuna that you've chambermated is going to give you five victory points. So she's just another type of victory card. Here's a card that's sure to upset a lot of people who already hate this game. I can't imagine why they would have a problem with this card. But it is three love to employ her. Felicity Horn, she's going to give you a love. Uh, you can chambermaid her from your hand for free or chambermaid her for a serving. And she's going to give you more and more victory points depending on how many of her you have. And I'm not going to go through every single one of these, but there's Lilac Hawkwind, just really briefly. Uh, all players have to discard the top card of their deck. After that, uh, put a love or made card from the town, costing four or less on top of your deck, so that's more of an attack card. Phyllis Lumley is going to say that you may discard the top card of your deck. If it was a card with an employee cost of five or more, you can gain an additional plus one love. So there's a lot of cards in the set that have to do with discarding and drawing. Uh, you can discard the top card of any player's deck to gain uh, a, a different bonus depending on which card gets discarded from their deck. Emily Raymond is really going to help you with building the new building cards in this set, which I'm going to get to very soon. Victoria Calderon, you can discard the top card of your deck and an opponent's deck. If you discarded a card was of an employee cost of two or more than that opponent's, you may return one of their buildings to town, which can really, really hurt your opponent if they were saving up for a building. Uh, I hate to keep you in suspense about those buildings. Just wait one moment. Uh, Amaretto Renard, you can treat two love cards uh, as two and three love cards as if they cost four. So if you're building up towards that strategy, that could be huge. Otherwise, she gives you no other significant abilities. Domino Bonaparte is uh, something that you're going to uh, put basically into any other player's private quarters and give them negative victory points at the end of the game. Rene R. Rusezek, too many R's. Uh, if you have six or more cards in your hand, you can re you must return a card from your hand to the top of your deck. So she's a decent card because she lets you draw and gives you a serving. But 
Uh, if you're going towards a strategy of having drawing more and more cards, she's going to force you to discard, so that could be bad. Uh, here's another card that's going to make people irate. Francine Barbier. You can return two love cards from your hand to town to get a May Chief of your choice. That's good. Uh, Carolyn, Carolyn Vendor has no special ability but lets you draw three cards. That's pretty awesome. Tiffany Wise. You can exchange the top of your private maids for one of the private maids available in the town. That's good. And uh, let's get to those private maids. So remember that the private maids are going to have their own deck and you're always going to have two available to possibly purchase but you can basically only see they go into your private quarters and you can only have one you can have multiples of them but only one is going to give you their ability at a time uh silk is going to let you draw a card and during your starting phase if you have three or more buildings in your private quarters you can actually draw a card uh krista and t -Bays, you can discard one mage chief card from your hand and if you do you get to draw two cards that's pretty cool actually uh, Eve Valentine, uh, you gain one, uh, I'm sorry, that's one purchase, I believe, uh, during your turn, so that's just a good thing to have. Uh, Shion Suwabaki is going to let you draw five cards, but you have to discard your entire hands to do so. Aurelie Lambert is, uh, during your starting phase, you get to draw a card, and if you have Courtney in your private quarters, this may is worth an additional four victory points. So Courtney is a different kind of card. Uh, Climbing Silvestri is just straight up victory points. That's four victory points at the end of the game. That's a pretty good one to have. Uh, Courtney Jewel is uh, you're going to be able to gain a serving during your starting phase. And if you have Orly in your private quarters, uh, it's worth four. So you see that she works together with that other card that I mentioned earlier. Mika is basically an attack card. You're going to put her into another opponent's deck and she's going to be worth negative victory points. Uh, Roanne Shiraz, you can discard a two love card from your hand and you're going to gain three draw. And now let's get to what is essentially the centerpiece of this game, expanding the house, and that is the building cards. Now the building cards are going to be bought just like the other maids. Uh, so in other words, you have to have an employ or buy in order to actually get one of them. But they're going to go straight into your private quarters and sometimes you're going to have prerequisites that you must need to meet. So for just a regular garden, it's going to cost you four to get it. It's worth one victory point, but if you have four or more of these in your private quarters, you cannot be the target of any further events. And remember that events are not only some of the bad cards from this set, but from the first set, like the bad habits and illnesses, you'll be immune. Now the estate is five to buy, and it's going to be worth two victory points, but you can't buy it unless you can place a mage chief from your hand under it. The mage chief is put beneath the estate and cannot be the target of an events card. So something to keep in mind. And then the Lily Garden, which is worth four victory points, but costs you six, and you can't buy one unless the total number of gardens and chambermated Ririko, which is a different type of maid, in your private quarters, exceeds your number of Lily Gardens. So in order to buy the first one, you're gonna have to have a Lily Garden or Ririko, and after that, you're gonna have to have more and more of those cards, but it is worth four victory points if that matters to you. So that's basically all the new stuff that's in Expanding the House for Tonto Kore. So let's go back to me in another format and tell you what I think about it. Okay, if you saw uh, my previous review of Tonto Kore, if you or I've played the game before, if you just watched my overview, and if you listened to what I said in the intro, then I'll say it again. There's nothing spectacularly new about expanding the house. Not enough that it's going to change anyone's opinion of the game. Really what's here is more of what you hopefully enjoy about Tonto Quarry and some interesting little twists that can change up the game quite a bit. And again, I have to compare the game to Dominion. In Dominion, you can play the base game for only so long before you need some amount of variety, some new types of cards, and that's basically what this is. Now, should they have made this a standalone expansion? Well, sure, it doesn't hurt. I mean, uh, I whether you not you played alone, standalone or not, just having access to all those different kinds of general maids, private maids, and the buildings is pretty interesting. And uh, if you play it like I do, what I do is I just have randomizers to pick which ones, uh, which general maids that I have out there, and then mix all the private maids together. So it could give a lot of variety to the game, and I think it does need it. So. On that own merit, it's good. Now, let's talk a little bit about what actually this game offers that's different. So, the general maids and some of the private maids are all pretty interesting in this set because a lot of them have to do with discarding cards, taking cards from the top of your deck, or actually inflicting set effects onto your opponent. There's a couple of cards that will make your opponent discard a card from the top of their deck, which could be good for you, bad for them, could do not much of anything. There's a couple little of interesting push your luck cards 
Uh, there's a card in particular that gives you no beneficial effect like drawing cards or giving you extra buys, but instead is going to, if you happen to play a lot of love cards in your turn, it increases the value of those love cards, which is a pretty interesting card to me. And you got to decide if that's worth having a guaranteed special ability like being able to draw two more cards or having an ep or for the chance that you're going to have an epic turn with a handful of love cards that are now much, much better and going to let you buy more and more stuff if you've got that amount of buys. Uh, so a lot of cards like that. A lot of cards let you, uh, you know, draw, discard, things like that. Uh, I really like all of those aspects, and I think they're a neat touch-up to the game. The buildings are actually, even though they're supposed to be the centerpiece of this game, I mean, that's the name, expanding your house, really not all that interesting to me. I think that they're okay. I think that they do add another dimension to the game. But really what they are are just trumped-up victory point cards. Uh, so And victory point cards that you need to meet prerequisites for and so you meet the prerequisites, you get your victory point cards, they're going to go into your private quarters, and they're not going to really do much of anything for the rest of the game. All it really is, is you having another road to victory. And that's not a bad thing, but like I said, it doesn't add really any kind of new mechanic to the game. That's, it's just more victory point cards. Uh, there, there is the one building which is going to let you be immune to event cards, but, you know, okay. But it's still only worth one victory point. Um... So, what am I saying? <laughs> what am I saying is that if you're a Tonto Quarry fan, uh, well, you probably already own this game or are desperately seeking out a copy since they can go out of print very quickly. Uh, but I do think that it's worth it if you're a fan. Having that more variety, having more options is always a good thing. Would I recommend getting this set on its own if you don't have the other sets? Hmm... I don't know. I think that the base set is probably a little bit better because you have a little more interaction with those event cards. Uh, and this set, it, it's not necessarily the best uh, intro friendly to this series of games. Uh, but nevertheless, it's a solid game. I like it just like I like the original Tonto Quarry. Maybe not as much, but together they really shine. And I think that it's a solid expansion. And uh, I can't wait to get more expansions from Tonto Quarry. So that is my review of Expanding the House, Tonto Quarry, and my name is Nick. This has been Board Game Brawl, reminding you to get out there and game every day and in every way, even with sexy maids. Bye-bye.